The movie opens with a couple's therapy session where John, the husband, expresses his belief that they don't need therapy, likening it to a checkup to assess the health of their relationship. The therapist asks the couple to rate their happiness on a scale of one to 10, to which Jane responds with an eight. As the session progresses, the therapist delves into more intimate questions, such as the frequency of their sexual activity, which the couple avoids answering. In an attempt to understand their relationship dynamics, the therapist prompts them to recount the story of how they first met, leading the couple to share their tale. Five to six years ago in Bogota, John found himself enjoying a drink when police officers stormed in, searching for solo travelers allegedly involved in a shooting incident with a barracuda. Shortly after, Jane arrived at the scene and upon being asked if she was alone, denied it and sought refuge beside John feigning a couple's status to evade potential danger. Sequestered in an isolated room, they exchanged introductions, marking the beginning of their unusual alliance. Their first date unfolded amidst a carnival atmosphere, with Jane's attempts at a shooting game proving less than stellar. John, on the other hand, effortlessly hit every target, sparking a hint of jealousy from Jane, who dismissed his success as mere luck. Determined to prove herself, Jane persevered until she too hit her marks. When John inquired about her shooting prowess, she mirrored his earlier response, attributing her achievement to beginner's luck. This initial encounter hinted at a mutual inclination towards secrecy and hinted at an underlying rivalry between the two. Fast forward five to six years, and the couple finds themselves cohabitating, their relationship strained by an inability to be forthright with one another, leading to frequent arguments over trivial matters. One day, John notices Jane getting ready to leave, prompting him to inquire about her plans. Jane confirms that there's a disturbance at a law firm downtown, where her expertise as a Wall Street employee is needed to assist. It later transpires that John also has an assignment, and they both embark on undercover missions. Jane disguises herself as a sex worker to locate her target in a hotel, while John heads to a secluded section of a bar to identify his. Feigning intoxication, John persuades a group of poker players to allow him to join their game, despite their initial reluctance. As the evening progresses, he forms a bond with them before his target arrives. With precision, John eliminates his target and the accompanying threats. Meanwhile, Jane successfully lures her target into a false sense of security before swiftly dispatching him and escaping through a window before her cover is compromised. Back at home, the couple seamlessly resumes their scheduled date, concealing their covert activities as if nothing occurred. Days later, John receives an exclusive assignment to neutralize Benjamin Dans, a high-priority threat planning a handoff at the Mexico border. His task is to prevent the transaction from taking place. Coincidentally, Jane also receives the same assignment, with her firm emphasizing the importance of her personal involvement due to the competitive nature of the task, as John's firm is eager to see them fail. At the job site, Jane strategically places deadly charges, anticipating the arrival of her target. Unexpectedly, John appears and inadvertently triggers the charges. Jane, frustrated by the unexpected turn of events, initially assumes John to be an innocent bystander as she swiftly disarms the charges. However, her perception changes when she witnesses John wielding a bazooka and preparing to eliminate the target. Realizing the imminent threat, Jane swiftly identifies John as a danger and takes decisive action, neutralizing him with a well-aimed shot. Caught off guard by Jane's unexpected response, John retaliates by firing the bazooka at her, prompting her to make a hasty escape. In the aftermath of the chaos, John retrieves Jane's laptop from the wreckage and brings it to Gwen for examination. After a cursory inspection, Gwen uncovers a billing address linked to the RAM. Armed with this newfound information, John ventures to the address, only to be stunned to discover that his wife is employed there. Meanwhile, Jane returns to her office, perturbed by the encounter, and enlists the help of her colleagues to identify the individual present at her job site. Shortly after, she receives a call from her boss, who delivers a chilling ultimatum. Locate and eliminate the enforcer within 48 hours, or face dire consequences. Determined to survive, Jane wastes no time in gathering crucial information. After a tense moment of investigation, she finally uncovers the identity of the culprit. After this, John calls her and inquires about the dinner time. She responds that dinner is at 7. At dinner, tension simmers between the two as they grapple with the knowledge they possess about each other. 
struggling to discern truth from deception and finding it difficult to trust one another while attempting to maintain a facade of normalcy. John tests her by deliberately dropping a wine bottle, which she deftly catches, prompting both of them to abruptly leave, pledging to reconvene later. John rushes to retrieve his gun while Jane makes a dash for her car to flee. As John gives chase, attempting to intercept her, he accidentally fires a shot, narrowly missing Jane and leaving her visibly shaken. In retaliation, she attempts to run him over with the car, but John leaps onto the vehicle, expressing his desire to talk. Once inside the car, Jane escapes, leaving it in motion and ultimately crashing with him. Two days later, John pays a visit to Jane's office, prompting her and her colleagues to quickly dispose of any potentially damaging evidence or files that could be used against them. Upon his arrival, they execute a resourceful escape, leaving John empty-handed. The next day, John ventures to the location where Jane has relocated. Disguised as a construction worker, he discreetly enters the building and boards the elevator. To his surprise, Jane contacts him through the elevator's communication system, assuming the role of security and warning him about a supposed malfunction. She threatens to detonate shaped charges unless he leaves town immediately. Unfazed, John calmly asserts that he has no intention of leaving, remarking that Jane consistently underestimates him. He challenges her perception of his capabilities, to which Jane responds by echoing his words. Despite her final warning, John remains steadfast, daring her to detonate the charges, confident that she won't follow through. As the countdown reaches its climax, Jane triggers the explosion. Later, it's revealed that Jane had been monitoring John's movements from a trailer outside the building all along. The scene then shifts to John, who emerges unscathed from another elevator. Disappointed by the realization that his supposed wife was willing to kill him, he disconnects the camera, expressing his disillusionment. The following night, Jane finds herself at dinner, overcome with remorse for having killed her husband. Surprisingly, John arrives and pours her champagne, expressing his desire for a divorce. Jane accepts, noting that it's fitting that he's asking for a divorce in the same place he proposed. As they sit down, they engage in small talk. John confronts Jane about her desire to see him dead, revealing that her intentions have caused him to feel indifferent towards her. After a brief pause, he asks her to dance. During the dance, they subtly disarm each other, symbolizing the lack of trust between them. Before long, Jane excuses herself to make her escape. It's later revealed that she had planted a bomb on John, prompting him to discard his jacket and hijack a limo. He calls her, expressing his disappointment at her attempts to kill him. Jane nonchalantly brushes off the incident, claiming it was just a small bomb. In retaliation, John vows to return home and destroy everything he ever bought for her. Back at their residence, they engage in a fierce and protracted gunfight, resulting in the destruction of their entire house. The confrontation escalates into a brutal fistfight, leaving them both battered and bruised. Before long, it leads to an intense standoff between the two. John, unable to bring himself to kill Jane, relinquishes his weapon, declaring that he cannot end her life. Jane, unfazed, goads him on, urging him to go through with it. Eventually, John surrenders, telling Jane to take his life if she desires. In a moment of mutual understanding, they both back down, their animosity giving way to a passionate reconciliation. They make love, seeking solace in each other's arms. However, their brief respite is shattered as highly skilled assassins, alerted by the expiration of the 48-hour deadline, locate them. A frantic chase ensues through the city streets, gunfire erupting as they fight to defend themselves. Amidst the chaos, they both decide to reveal their true selves to each other. John discloses that he was previously married, while Jane confesses to being an orphan. After successfully eliminating the assassins, they resolve to capture Benjamin Dans, recognizing him as the primary target. They believe that by capturing him, they can uncover the motives behind why their respective companies want them dead. Once they locate and capture Benjamin, they interrogate him, demanding answers about why their companies have targeted him. Benjamin unveils a shocking revelation. He was never the true target from the beginning. Their respective companies realized their engagement and orchestrated a plan, assigning them the same deadly job to target each other. He explains that having two rival agents cohabitating is detrimental to business, and they were used as unwitting pawns in this scheme. After a brief respite, assassins track them down using a tracker hidden within Benjamin's belt. The couple flees, seeking refuge under a drain. There, Jane proposes a plan to John. 
they escape the country by boat. However, John believes that running away will only prolong their predicament and suggests they stand their ground and fight. With resolve, they make their way to a store to evade capture. There, they skillfully dispatch assailants before alerting others, resulting in a chaotic and deadly shootout. Outnumbered and outgunned, they make a desperate escape to the elevator. Determined to turn the tide, they plan a counterattack. Jane positions herself for a sniper attack from a high vantage point while John takes a lower position. However, their plan takes a dire turn when Jane is shot, causing her to fall. John rushes over to aid her, both of them getting shot in the process. The scuffle leads them to an isolated room where John expresses regret for not following through with Jane's escape plan. In response, Jane reassures him, noting that it typically rains this time of year and expressing her contentment with being with him in that moment. After their heart-to-heart, -heart, they prepare their weapons and charge out to confront more assailants. With strategic coordination, they eliminate their foes and emerge victorious. The movie concludes with them back at the therapy session, discussing the strength of their marriage and the progress they've made. When the therapist is about to inquire about their relationship, John interrupts, prompting the therapist to ask about their sex life. As the therapist is about to pose the question, John responds by gesturing the number 10 with his fingers, indicating their satisfaction in that aspect of their relationship.